Howdy! Welcome to the channel. Uh, my name's Matt. If you haven't been here before, thanks for joining us. Uh, this video is helpful if you are in a situation by yourself where you got to get things done like I am. I work alone 99% of the time and I know a lot of people are going to find fault in the way I do this because it's not the safest way in the world, but it's a calculated risk like the same as you speeding to work in the morning because you're running late. It's a calculated risk. You know, it's probably no more dangerous than that. I am careful, believe it or not, but uh, these are all methods you can use to get your tracks back on by yourself or get a tire blown back on the beat by yourself. Uh, the tire trick, you know, a million people know about the tire trick, but some people think that it's just a joke. It really does work. This particular instance wasn't super effective, but it did end up doing it for us. Uh, the other thing was these Grouser tracks I have on my skid steer. Everybody asks about them, ask if I like them. Long story short is yes, I really do like them. They have their faults. They definitely have their advantages too. When I first got these tracks, I did them because I was working on a uh, small pasture for some people that was along a low-lying creek. It was like this time of year, it was frozen, it was cold, really, really super wet. And I couldn't believe it. I put these tracks on my rubber tired skid steer, their metal grouser tracks, and I actually had mud rolling into the cab while I was working. I was in that deep of mud. I think that's probably, the front of my cab's probably two, two and a half feet off the ground at least. And I was in that deep of mud to where there was slop rolling into the cab onto my boots. And I was actually running out of power to keep going, but the traction was there. I never lost traction. That thing would just keep biting. And actually, I am a firm believer that these steel tracks over my rubber tires are better in deep mud than any dedicated rubber track machine that I've run anyway. Uh, rubber tracks are great, don't get me wrong, I definitely I would prefer to have a rubber track machine if I had the option, but they are more expensive, among other things. Rubber tracks are definitely more stable, uh, definitely do a lot better on hills and for grading they're a lot better, but the uh, steel tracks do excellent for what they are and what you're working with. So anyway, here's uh, here's what I got into today. Okay, down here at the church today with the problem on the skiddy. Ah, uh, that's a problem. So these tracks are actually really awesome. Everybody asks me about these tracks. These are Grouser brand tracks, uh, and they really do really excellent in really wet conditions. One of the problems you'll have is if you you know, you start to get a low tire and don't notice it and you turn, the tracks will pop the tire right off the bead, which isn't a common problem, but it's happened to me more than once now. This time when it happened, I was in the middle of a job and it ripped off the valve stem. So I got new valve stems here to get the tire back on the bead. We're gonna have to take the track off and maybe take the tire off, we'll see. So these tracks are adjustable with uh, carriage bolts. They're half inch carriage bolts. They come in from the backside here so they don't cut your tire. And so they're adjustable too. There's a second hole here. So I, when I take them apart, I always take them off at a place where they're in the far adjustment. And when I put them back on, I'll stick them in the tighter adjustment because that's the other big thing. These things, if, if you run them too loose on your tires, they'll start to tear up your tires. But if you keep them adjusted properly, they don't. And thank God for the cordless impact. They come out fairly easy with a little persuasion. I better get the other side out before I take that all the way out. The other side on these machines is a little more difficult to get to because clearance issues. You can't get the impact on it. So, wrenches work pretty good. God.
typically I pull ahead and take the nuts off the same way I'm doing right here, but I was avoiding it in the first place because the tire was off the rim. I didn't want to really pull forward and damage the rim possibly, but I couldn't get the nut or the, I couldn't get the bolt out without pulling forward, so I just bit the bullet, pulled forward, and knocked it out like normal, and then backed up to perform the work. You gotta be careful when you take these apart. There's a little bushing inside there. That's your wear item. You replace the bolt with the bushing, and the track should last a long time. I always try to split the tracks right uh, centered between the two wheels. Otherwise, it's uh, hard to get together or back apart. One side will want to fall off. So this tire got driven a little bit after it popped off, so it got mud kind of on the inside of the bead here. We'll go around with wire brush, getting in here, and push the tire over when I use two hands. Clean the inside of that bead up real good before we try and set this. If that bead has dirt in it, it won't seal properly and it'll go flat again. All right, I cleaned up around the, uh, the valve stem hole. These are just come apart. So you just stick it through there. Rubber piece goes up through the middle. This piece goes down through from the top. Put your jam nut and the washer on it, crank her down, she seals up. Theoretically. All right, so this is what you do when you don't have a bead blaster. Get yourself some uh, starting fluid, spray a good little helping of that in there around that rim, stand back, light it, and then if it doesn't go poof, right when you light it, you smack it with a hammer, it usually gets it to go, then you hurry up and put air to it. I don't have a compressor here. All I have is a five gallon air tank. So hopefully we can make it work with that. Otherwise we'll have to take the tire off, take it home. You're gonna need a little more bang. It's still burning in there, lovely. That right there was a good example of why I'm smacking it with a hammer. It, it lit the outside of the tire, but it, to get the full on explosion that we need to drive this tire back onto the rim, we I smacked it with a hammer so that that flame could get inside the tire where I had sprayed some more of the ether. Ah, oh, because I turned it the wrong. All right. Well, rather than sit here and use a whole can of ether, my air tank's about out. So we had it once, didn't get it. So we have to take it home, or at least take it off. All right, back here at the garage, I got the tire thrown down here. And laying on its side helps doing this, at least from my experience. Uh, and plus I have a pretty good air compressor set up here at the shop. So just with this volume of air I got, instead of an air tank, I might be able to get this thing to seat. We'll see. No.
Okay, it seems to be blowing out more from this back side, so I'm going to try and spray it from this back side. There we go. Finally worked. Have to get enough pressure in it to hold it. Always make sure the fire is out like that. See, there's still more burn under there. Actually caught a brand new tire on fire one time setting it like that. I should really invest in a bead blaster. I don't know why I haven't, but this works. It's probably why I haven't. I run 35 in these tires. We're sitting at like 22 right now, so we'll keep going. Thinking about starting to switch to 40 in the fronts and uh, 35 in the rears. Almost there. Yeah, there we go. 35. We'll get some soapy water and spray around the valve stem and the bead right now since we're here and make sure it's sealed up good. Or so good. This side looks good. Awesome. Looks good. By the way, if, if you don't have a cordless impact and you do any of this kind of work, uh, definitely worth the money. Uh, pay attention to which one you're getting. I know DeWalt makes a really good one. I'm really happy with this one. Also, uh, Milwaukee makes a really good one. So just do your research and uh, can't go wrong. Save you a lot of headache. Tracks are actually froze to the ground right there. Otherwise they just flip right on there, so I gotta pull forward some.
This little fancy dancy ratchet strap here is how you get those things tight. It's an endless ratchet strap, so it just comes off one end and feeds back through itself. Okay, I'm having a lot of trouble here because this is pretty much worst case scenario for trying to get these on. They're still frozen to the ground in the middle and there's big chunks of frozen dirt here on this side that's preventing it from uh, fitting tight back up against the tire the way it was. So I'm having trouble uh, making them come together. I might have to flip that back off and clean it out with a hammer. pretty tight though we'll see if we can't get it Guess off. Man, I'm not glad that's done. Okay, I know that was kind of a boring video compared to some, uh, but you know it's not always big accomplishments, big projects, and this or that. It's you know this is the nitty gritty stuff I'm dealing with every day, struggling here on my own. Uh, frozen ground really made this simple job a lot harder, and we got her done either way. Uh, I just got to keep shouldering into it. Uh, next week I got a cool project coming for you. There's a little sneak peek going to that, so. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed anyways, and I'll uh, catch you next week. Thanks for watching.